All right, how are we? Welcome back to a new video. Different setup, I know. I'm in Sydney with the boys. It's kind of makeshift, I'm just sitting on the couch. It probably looks a bit better than it is. There's not really much going on in here. But today, we are going to be having a look at the new Adobe Illustrator on the iPad, which I have been very excited about recently, but I haven't had an iPad to play around with. Fortunately, because of my circumstance, I don't have a laptop, and so I've almost been forced to use this iPad for the meantime, thanks to Liam for letting me borrow his. Kind of a blessing in disguise, because I now get to try out, or I have been trying out, the new Adobe Illustrator. So I've got a few things that I want to say, but I kind of want to roughly run through each tool and aspect that they've integrated within this software. Initially, when you're having a look, obviously you've got your create new artboard. Uh, you can actually have a look at your other work that you save to the cloud. I don't use this function, but I definitely am going to start using it if I was to buy an iPad or to just back things up to the cloud if something was to happen to my hard drive back at home. And then if you're a noob, you can actually learn about it. It runs you through everything. I'm not a noob, actually, no, I'm a noob. I, I've already done this and I don't know what Discover does. Alrighty, so if we just uh, go create new, we don't need a specific artboard size. We're just gonna play around with the tool. So the first tool that you have is your selection tool. The same shit as your normal one on the computer. It just helps you select everything. And if we draw a shape, we can select this here. So it selects the whole entire object and completely disregards all of its anchor points. You can scale it which way you want. You can rotate it, bada bing, bada boom, pretty straightforward. The next tool is your direct selection tool. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. Obviously, I'm glad that they have this because you can go in and manually select anchor points and you can curve objects. So this is where you're going to manually change your shapes if you need to. Thank fuck they also have this in there because it is really important to the Adobe Illustrator suite. Uh, then you've got your pen tool, obviously pretty necessary. If I must say, I'm always using the pen tool on my computer. And so it's nice that they've obviously integrated it within the iOS app. And if we're just going through this quickly, they've also got the pencil tool. Usually with the iPad Pros, they bring out the Apple Pen. Because it's an iPad, you can kind of treat it like a tablet. You're drawing on it. It seems like they're leaning towards a more free-flowing, hand-drawn kind of application as opposed to what you might, or what I often do on my desktop, which is keyboard and mouse, making more geometric and linear vector art. So if I was to use this, I would be probably trying out a new style, things that would normally mean that I have to draw with my own hands. So the pencil tool would probably be my go-to. And then if you hold down on the pencil tool or double tap it, you can actually select your brush. And this gives you multiple options here, different brush sizes and brush styles. It also gives you some options down here. You can change the smoothness. So this dictates how smooth your lines are going from one all the way up to 10, meaning that it'll automatically smooth the edges. With the brush tool specifically, you can actually change the roundness, the angle, the sizing of your brush stroke as well, which is nice. It's cool that they've actually implemented some specific kind of settings for the brush tool. They don't have this for the pencil tool. They only have smoothness. You've got your eraser tool if you fuck up because you're a shit and you want to know. <laughs> You've got your eraser tool if you want to erase things. Pretty straightforward. You've got your shape tool as well and you can choose between a square, circle, triangle or star. You can't change how many vertices you have. You can't change anything in regards to this. It's just, if you want a shape, you've got these shapes. All right, text tool. You want to do a bit of typing. Liam's actually got a keyboard in front of me. Hello. My name's CK and I suck at Illustrator. Bada bing, bada boom. You can also uh, change your artboard sizes if you want, if you need to, and you can import images, files, cloud documents, or anything that's saved on your Adobe CC library. I think this is a pretty cool function. I often trace images that I find on the internet or photos that I take myself. And so being able to take those images put them into the artboard and then work my magic from there is great. Next up, you can change the fill and the stroke, which I think is mandatory. And once you come into here, the color wheel is actually pretty cool. The way it works, you can go around the color wheel and then select what kind of shade of that specific color you want. If you want to toggle no fill, you've got this pretty iconic thing here and you can actually switch them between here. So it's pretty functional in my sense. They've definitely simplified the toolbar down, which I like, but I also don't like because 
it's new. It is new. I haven't spent too much time on it. In terms of this little touch bar thing here, so this acts as your shift command or your shift control, and it actually works with a lot of the tools. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but for example here, uh, if I grab the pencil tool and I'm drawing a straight line and I hold down this shift, uh, as you can see, it's actually snapping it to a either 90 degree angle or it's vertical or horizontally just flat. That's really nice because you could be drawing and if you wanna just instantly snap it to a straight line, you can start holding that down, release it, keep drawing. I wanna get a straight line up. You can hold that down and uh, yeah, it helps you kind of maintain that structure if you need it. So have a play around with that with other specific tools as well because it does have functions with other tools. Over on your right hand side of the toolbar, you've got your layers. The layers are a little bit different this time. You've also got your properties. This is where you can change your fill, your stroke, your blend mode, which I don't know what that does to be honest. What does it do? Okay, this looks like it's a like a Photoshop application to be honest. You've got screen, overlay, color burn, dark and light, and yeah. I'm not gonna play around with that because I don't know what it does, but go ahead. The one thing that I am happy they've included is their Pathfinder tool. I use Pathfinder tool all the time on desktop. It's great because it means that when you create two different shapes and you highlight the two, you can choose to do multiple things with that shape. If we click divide all, well, this is where things get interesting. So Illustrator on the iPad automatically groups objects when you use the Pathfinder tool. So it's grouped here. If we ungroup them, we should be able to move them there. There you go, okay. And we've got three different shapes now. I think this is great because you can use shapes to create other shapes or clean up other shapes using the Pathfinder tool. And I'm very happy that they've got it. But keep in mind, it's not the same as the desktop version. I was playing around with this edit function before. You can copy the appearance of a specific shape. So if we make this a color and duplicate it over, copy the appearance, we'll make this this color here. If we copy this appearance here, we can then paste the appearance and it'll make it the same color. You could also just use the eyedropper tool from this panel here. It comes up here and you've got to drag and select it and make sure you're hovering over the color that you want. So there's multiple ways to do different things, which I quite like. It creates versatility and depending on what you prefer, you can become better or quicker at what you're trying to do. Other than that, they do have a lot of customization for lines. Obviously it's Adobe Illustrator, but just to show you a couple, if I was to create a triangle with an anchor point at the top, you can come down to your path section and you can click multiple things. So if I was to click join path, it would join these two anchor points down here. So it connects those. By the way, two fingers is to undo, three fingers is to redo. I think that's really cool, especially if you're working quickly. Now back to your path tool, you can convert it to a curve, so it converts all of those anchor points to a curve, which I think is nice. I don't know when you would ever use that, but you can. And there's other little cool functions. With your direct selection tool, you can just gently tap and hold on an anchor point and it deletes it. There's little functionalities like that that they've implemented, which I think is great. You wouldn't know about them if you didn't search up a tutorial or some shit, so I highly recommend actually going through a proper tutorial, but I'm just showing you what I think is cool and what I've learned so far. My, one of my favorite things about this app actually is the reflect tool. And if I create a new artboard, me and Liam were playing around with this uh, yesterday. If you create a little shape like this and then select it, they've got this tool over here called repeat. And if you click radial, it actually repeats that shape multiple times. You can dictate the amount of shapes that it does. You can increase the size of it. You can actually decide how many go around that uh, repeatable pattern as well. This is really cool because you can create some really, really awesome stuff. If I go making sure that it's still selected, I go back into my pencil tool and I draw, it'll actually repeat this drawing again and again. And if I select everything, I can control how far they come from each other and the way that they actually sit. I think this is really cool to make quick and easy patterns or logos. This was fun to play around with. I'm really glad that they chucked this in because it's a bit of a bitch to create this in the desktop version. Other than that, guys, I'm quite interested with the software that they've created. There are some things that they can add, but for what they've created is great. It is a vector program, obviously, and I did zoom in a fuckload when I first used it just to be sure, to make sure there was no pixels. Cause to be honest, I found it hard to believe, especially after, you know, everyone was kind of using softwares like Procreate and stuff. 
but no, it is vector, uh, it is functional, it integrates with your Adobe libraries um, and your cloud documents. You do need an Adobe CC account to be able to use it just like the other softwares like Fresco and Photoshop. For what they're trying to create, it seems like they want to make it more hand-drawn, but I am excited to to get a little bit more used to the way that they've integrated their toolbar, uh, obviously this little shift control thing over here, that'll be fun to play around with. I'm definitely far from being used to it, but I'm excited. I'm glad that they brought it out on the iPad and it makes me want to buy an iPad a lot more now that they have this app. I hope I went through a lot of the settings and maybe you learned something. Maybe you found it interesting what I thought of this app. Short and sweet one in the fucking Airbnb. It's hot today. We're probably gonna to go to the beach later on or tomorrow and uh, get a lot more content whilst we're here. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.